Here we're going to look at winter 2022, paper four, variant three, question number one. Very common question in exams is a motion question, and that's what we're going to look at here. So an aeroplane accelerates along a horizontal runway before takeoff. The aeroplane accelerates for 35 seconds. The speed of the aeroplane when it takes off is 72 meters per second. Figure 1.1 shows how the speed of the aeroplane varies between time t equals zero and time t equals 35. In other words, this graph represents that journey. If you look kind of towards the beginning here, it looks like it's a constant acceleration. And if you look towards the end, it looks like a constant acceleration as well. How do I know? Gradient of a speed time or velocity time graph gives me acceleration. I'm going to stick to speed here since that's what they've used on the y-axis. Understand when it comes to the definition of acceleration at this level, speed and velocity can be used interchangeably. But in the middle here, or for most of this mid part, if you like, the gradient is changing, which means the acceleration is changing. So kind of constant at the beginning, a big constant acceleration, a smaller constant acceleration at the end, and changing in between. Question A says, define acceleration. Now the proper way of doing this is to say rate of change of velocity. Here they've made that a bit simpler by calling it change of velocity per unit time. And they've made it super simple by saying A equals V minus U over T. I would strongly suggest you do not do that in exams. Whilst they allow it here, I can think of countless others where that would not be accepted. The simplest that they would accept is writing the equation in words. And by that, I mean acceleration. Equals final speed or velocity minus initial speed or velocity divided by time. They very rarely accept that, so I would stay away from it. Part B, calculate the average acceleration of the aeroplane between time t equals zero and 35 seconds. Notice it's only worth one mark, which I think is rather harsh because many students forget the squared when it comes to meters per second squared for acceleration. Remember, the gradient of a speed time graph is acceleration. Now here also, what a lot of students might think of, especially if you think a lot and you're very clever, wait a minute, the gradient's changing. How can we find the acceleration between zero and 35 without drawing tangents? Well, here the key word is average acceleration. In other words, there's no need for tangents. They're not asking, for example, for the acceleration. Let's say I draw a point right here. We don't know the time, but let's say the time, I'm going to make it up, was 10 seconds. If they asked for the acceleration at 10 seconds, then yes, you would need to draw a tangent, but there's no need for the entire thing because they've said average acceleration. So what do we do? We do A equals V minus U over T, 72 minus zero over 35, and we get 2.057142 meters per second squared. And when rounded correctly, 2.1 meters per second squared. A bit harsh for one mark. Then it says the combined mass of the aeroplane, its passengers and its fuel on takeoff is 1.1 times 10 to the five. Calculate the average resultant force in the aeroplane between zero and 35 seconds. Again, they've used that word average and what I do want to point out here is F stands for resultant force. So we already know the mass, 1.1 times 10 to the 5. You can write it in standard form or out in full, 110,000. Notice here that I've used the rounded answer. In math, the proper way of doing this is to use the unrounded answer. However, more and more mark schemes are allowing you to get away with this, regardless of syllabus. So. The issue here is you end up adding more error. I know why they've done it, but in general speak, when you're taught math, you should use the unrounded answer and only round at the end. But like I said, you will see that they will allow this more and more and more in mark schemes. Now, let's move on to the next part. 
The force provided by the engines of the aeroplane is constant. Well, that's key. And it says, give one possible explanation for the change in acceleration between 0 and 35 seconds. So let's look at this. I am going to represent my aeroplane with a box. If I was an artist, I'd draw one. And they're saying the force is constant. So let's just pretend I'm making it up. It's 20,000, the thrust force of the plane. Well, for the acceleration to become less, because remember here the gradient, let's call it number one, is bigger. Let's call this number three. And this is number two. The gradient at one is bigger than number three. In other words, the acceleration is bigger at one than three. Well, why would that happen? That would only happen if the backward force is getting bigger and bigger. Remember, they told us that the thrust force from the engine is staying the same. In reality, if we change the thrust force, we can change the resultant force as well. But here, they've told us that they're keeping whatever this is, I just made up a number, the same. So let's just pretend at the beginning, maybe this was 1,000. What would the resultant force be? 20,000 minus 1,000, that would make it 19,000. But if this gets bigger and bigger, let's just now pretend it's, I'm making it up 5,000. Well, that would make the resultant force 20,000 minus 5,000, which is 15,000. So why would this force backwards be coming bigger? What you need to know, any object moving through a fluid such as air, air resistance will get bigger the faster the object moves, and it will become less the slower the object moves. So air resistance increases with velocity or speed in this case. So what's going to happen? Increase or change in air resistance, increase or change in wind. So the, the proper way of referring to this would be air resistance. Then the final part of the question, on figure 1.2, sketch a graph to show how the acceleration of the aircraft varies between 0 and 35 seconds. So to sketch on this graph. Now remember, I've mentioned it a couple of times already, if we look at one, the acceleration looks constant there and bigger compared to three. And somewhere in between, it's changing and becoming less. You know, number two, as I've labeled it, kind of spans the curved part of this graph and the acceleration is going down. So how could you draw this? Well, if you think about the first part and the last part, I'm hoping that you'll understand first part is constant and it's big. Let me make that straighter. The last part is constant and it's, let's just make that smaller. And then what do you do in between? Maybe that's slightly bigger. Well, you can get away with drawing a straight diagonal line. I'm going to curve mine down because the acceleration is changing, but they will allow a straight diagonal line. Now, why did I do that? Just to make sure you understand. Number one, steeper gradient, steeper acceleration, and constant because it looks like a straight line here. Number three, smaller acceleration, smaller gradient, but constant again. It's this region here between one and three where it curves, where the acceleration is decreasing.